Hello, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to do a video talking about each of the cognitive functions at their best versus at their worst. And I'm going to do this through the lens of differentiation versus fusion. And so I'm going to make the argument the functions are at their best when they're differentiated and the functions are at their worst when they're fused. So the way this is going to go is I'm going to kind of define the words differentiation and fusion, and then I'm going to take quotes on what Young and Myers and Briggs said about differentiation and fusion. And then I'm going to look at each of the axes when they're differentiated at their best versus when they're fused at their worst. So differentiation in the context that like Carl Jung is talking about it is to make or become different or distinct in the process of growth or development. Fusion is to join or blend to form a single entity. You can kind of pull two things apart and make them different and distinct from each other in order to grow or develop or you can join and blend them to form a single entity. So here's a few quotes from Jung. So the first one is, his most differentiated function plays the principal role in an individual's adaptation or orientation to life. So this is just making the point that your dominant function is your most differentiated function, your most distinct function. This of course does not exclude the fact that individuals certainly exist in whom thinking and feeling stand upon the same level, whereby both have equal motive power and consciousness. But in such a case, there is no question of a differentiated type, but merely of a relatively undeveloped thinking and feeling. Uniform consciousness and unconsciousness of functions is therefore a distinguishing mark of a primitive mentality. So they're saying it could be common, like it could exist that thinking and feeling are at approximately the same level, say like an ENTP, for example, maybe their thinking and feeling are at approximately the same level, but that is not a differentiated type and that's undeveloped. So if your thinking and feeling are not differentiated and distinct from each other, you know, if one is not developed more than the other or they're not distinct from each other, they lead to both being undeveloped and kind of a primitive mentality. When he becomes neurotic, he is much harder to treat in the rational way because the functions to which the physician must appeal are in a relatively undifferentiated state. Hence, little or no trust can be placed in them. So undifferentiated functions are not in fact only primitive, but it also can lead to a type of neuroticism. And when functions are undifferentiated, little or no trust can be placed in them. So long as a function is still so fused with one or more other functions, thinking with feeling, etc., that it is unable to operate on its own, it is in an archaic condition, not differentiated, not separated from the whole as a special part and existing by itself. Without differentiation, direction is impossible, since the direction of a function towards a goal depends on the elimination of anything irrelevant. Fusion with the irrelevant precludes direction. Only a differentiated function is capable of being directed. So this quote talks a lot about these two words, differentiation versus fusion. So if two functions are fused together, and they're examples like thinking with feeling. So if you fuse TE with FI, for example, that's archaic, they cannot operate on its own, they're not a special part existing within themselves, and direction is possible. So like if TE wants to go right, FI wants to go left, because they're opposites. And so how can you go in any direction when they're just fused together? you make no progress. So you gotta differentiate those two things, pull them apart so they're not fused, and then pick one so you can go in some direction. And then Myers and Briggs quote, one of the opposites must be tuned out in order to have a chance to develop either of them. Trying to develop skills in sensing and intuition at the same time is like listening to two radio stations on the same wavelength. Even in effective adults, the two least used processes remain relatively childish, and the effectiveness lies mainly in the two processes which have grown skilled from being preferred and exercised. So once again, you cannot, if these two functions are fused, you can't develop them, they're opposites. You have to pull them apart and you have to pick one. So from the last video, these are some of the quotes that I took from Young and Myers and Briggs and BB about each of the different functions. Um, and some of these quotes that I put in the third function box could also apply to the fourth function as well. So what I want to, I don't really want to get too far into these, but I want to make the argument that these are archaic if fused and fusion precludes direction, like Carl Jung said. And I think your second and third functions have a tendency to be on the same level, like Carl Jung said, but that gives an archaic quality and it precludes direction. Um, this would apply to the first and fourth function as well, but... It, he said that the first function is the most differentiated. So that would technically be possible with the first function, but he just says the first one's the most differentiated. So I'm not really gonna talk about that. So I'm only gonna talk about how the second and third functions can be fused and how when you fuse your second and third functions together, you lose the strengths of either of them. So I'm gonna start with the ETPs and the IFJs because they both might have a tendency to fuse TI and FE since those are both in their second and third slots. So the ENTPs and ESTPs have TI second and FE third. And so if these functions were nice and differentiated 
Introverted thinking is really good at critiquing knowledge in general and getting us to the standard of truth and not really wanting to accept anything less than full nuance and complexity and perfection. Extroverted feeling is really good at creating a harmonious environment with social grace and noticing the smallest change in another person and then adapting to themselves accordingly in order to create a good rapport. So that's when they're nice and differentiated, nice and distinct. However, when you fuse these two functions together, you can get kind of um, this archaic, primitive quality that Carl Jung was talking about. So you might take the critiquing nature from TI, but instead of critiquing knowledge in general, you might orientate that toward people, groups, and teams. So you're criticizing people, groups, and teams. So you're taking the people aspect from FE and the critical aspect from TI, and you get kind of this very critical nature instead of a detached critique of knowledge in general. Or extroverted feeling is really good at, t at a persuading a room being very uh, persuasive and influential in the emotional environment. So they might take the FE skills, of using humor or emotional tactics to persuade a group, so that's Effie's skills, by making fun of people, groups, or teams, instead of being intellectually detached, becomes personally invested. You know, instead of just in your own mind saying this idea doesn't quite make sense, we need some more nuance here, unfortunately using Effie's skills of really moving a room to kind of move a room in favor of, okay, everyone, this team is stupid. Let's all make fun of this team. But it loses its detached logical respect. Introverted feeling is definitely a function worthy of a lot of respect, particularly when it's emotionally detached and not personally invested. And it definitely has the capability of getting us to a higher standard of truth. Now for the IFJs, so the INFJs and ISFJs, they have extroverted feeling second and introverted thinking third. So one thing that they might do is they might perceive something that's disharmonious. Someone made fun of their spouse or something like a big no-no, like you do not do this disharmonious thing. And then they will use any argument necessary to defend those people that they love. And it typically is in people that they love or it could be a cause maybe that they're particularly interested in. Um, but they will really weaponize TI to do Effie's bidding. So Effie said, we need this culture. Hey, TI, you come here. I'm gonna use you as a weapon. We're gonna really get these people. When TI is not fused with FE, TI can be, it's very detached and it's critiquing knowledge in general. But sometimes with a lot of um, IFJs, you get this you a lot and the argument will involve a lot of pointing fingers and a lot of uh, you did this and you did this and you need to do this. You know, you hear, I tend to hear the word you a lot in IFJs arguments. Or it could be that they have a certain FE culture that they like. Um, maybe for them, it's a culture that they like uh, that women stay at home or that men go to work or something. It could be some culture, it's some FE culture that they like. I just choose that as an arbitrary example. They might not hold that particular belief. But then they will use introverted thinking and any argument necessary to create that culture. So if they desire, if their goal is this FE culture that they like, instead of just saying, you know, this is just my preferences and this is what I like, they won't, you know, they might not stop at that. Here's a study that supports it. Here's a biological thing that supports it. If you really get into all the biology, this is how things are supposed to be and how things are meant to be. But really it didn't start with TI, it didn't start with the facts. It started with, this is the culture that I like and that works for the people around me. And then I'm subordinating these facts to it as opposed to starting with a broad layer of facts and then making a decision. Uh, now to the ITJs and the EFPs. These types both fuse TE and FI. So the INTJ and ISTJ have TE second and FI third. So extroverted thinking at its best is building an efficiently running system and saying what works and what can make progress for the group. So whatever the outcome is that we want, how can we organize things and reach it on schedule? Introverted feeling is all about looking into the self and saying what resonates with me and my values and my morals, what actions um, do I perceive to be moral and I want to root out any imperfection within myself, whether it be pride or ego or different character traits that I don't feel like are meeting the standard of moral perfection. Now, when you blend these two together, when they're not differentiated, when they're fused, you get kind of the worst of both worlds. So you might take the regulating nature of TE and the morals nature of FI, and you get this policing values, morals, and speech as opposed to regulating efficient systems. And this is where you can get kind of this social justice warrior type thing where you get a little bit of the interest in social justice with FI with the um, argumentation and regulation of TE to get this thing that's like, eh, this is not the ITJ really meeting their purpose. This is just getting annoying. Um, another thing is introverted feeling can be a lot about identity and understanding the value of humans intrinsically without necessarily needing to output anything. 
Um, and TE can be a lot about work and what outcomes am I producing? So when you conflate those two things, you know, when you see work as your identity, so when work is critiqued, they see it as they themselves are being critiqued and they become very sensitive, sensitive little darling was the quote. Um, at which point they might start to weaponize TE to do FI's bidding. So FI's feelings were hurt and not enough understanding of FI to be able to process and deal with your own emotions or being able to, you know, FI doms might say, you know, these are my emotions and I'll take care of them myself. But with TE, if you mix them a little bit, then TE is like, hey, you hurt my feelings, you did this, but they won't usually say that. They won't say that you hurt my feelings, but they'll use TE's argumentation skills to then go and you know, get this thing fixed. Uh, the EFPs, ENFPs and ESFPs have FI second and TE third. So very similar, using TE's accomplishments to feel FI good about themselves, uh, finding value in accomplishments, needing external validation and to be seen. So because they're an extroverted type, there's a little more than the ITJs, for example, on the need to be seen or their external accomplishments are finding that. Um, so there's a little more heavy emphasis there. Um, another one could be over committing to tasks. So TE can be very task oriented and, you know, scheduling with certain things for a goal. Um, over committing to tasks due to insecurity. So FI is like, oh, I'm a little insecure. What if they don't like me if I say no? And maybe a difficult time saying no. So due to insecurity, they over commit to tasks or maybe they need to feel important or need to feel like they need to be seen or something. But then the time comes and then FI comes back around and says, oh, I didn't actually want to do this thing. So then maybe end up flaking on this thing. So some, maybe sometimes they do follow through and they're just an over committing to tasks, but then their true values aren't really met. But then sometimes maybe then they flake when they do come back to what their real values were. So it's this whole issue with accomplishments versus values and what you really value with these two types. Uh, the next types are the INPs and ESJs, and they both fuse NE and SI. So the INFPs and INTPs have NE and SI third. And so extroverted intuition at its best when it's differentiated is really good at exploring the external possibilities and you know brainstorming and ideation and the seed of future promise and what are all the things that we could do and a lot about you know change and novelty and seeking to explore all of the possibilities. Introverted sensing is an internal processing of sensory experiences. So this could be uh, you know bodily experiences like comfort. It could have to do with safety. Um, and you know, keeping like the routine going because that is good for your body. Um, it can also be an internal processing of sensory experiences as in making meaning from the past and seeing what is through kind of a lens through the past. So those are two functions at their best. Now, when you fuse them, you get kind of this issue. So with NE, they might explore the possibilities, but it's only within the realm of SI comfort and passivity as opposed to enthusiastically reaching outside the bounds. So an example of this could be like video game worlds, for example. You're like, oh wow, this is like really cool. There's like a lot of these possibilities. This game is really cool, but it's only within the realm of comfort and passivity. So you're like still on the couch, still being very, com being very comfort oriented, but you know, it's really not pushing the bounds of what your purpose is, or you won't feel satisfied if you do a lifetime of that. Another thing is that NE sees possibilities very optimistically. It talked about the seed of future promise. Introverted sensing will really treasure the past and see things through this timeless quality it talked about and how, um, and how the past kind of impacts the future. And so kind of an optimistic lens with both of those past and future. However, when you fuse these two, you get kind of this, you know, push and pull, which way are we going? And so they can start basing future possibilities instead of just, you know, ideating and brainstorming on its own and like, what could we do in these possibilities? They'll start basing that off of what negatively happened in the past. And one of the worst qualities with introverted sensing is this fatalism. Nothing's never, nothing's ever going to change. I can't change. And when they start leaning too much into this, they're like, well, that's just how the future is going to be. And it really starts closing off those realms of possibilities and it might start generating these negative things that could happen in the future or based on the past. This is what happens, so nothing can ever change. Uh, for the ESJs, ESFJs and ESTJs, they have introverted sensing second and extroverted intuition third. So what could happen sometimes is maybe you've got an ESFJ and they have a friend who hurt them or something and they don't know the full story. They only know the piece. They only know the pieces of the story. So what they might do is with NE, they might invent possible stories of what happened but they're fantastical and not based in reality. So they take this introverted sensing, looking at the past, 
but instead of being more principled and more realist and more realistic like introverted sensing is and liking the stories in the past they're kind of inventing they take this inventiveness with an e to make kind of this fantastical story. Another thing with introverted sensing is it's very um, responsible. So it's really good at holding the self, you know, responsible and making sure that it's doing its duties and things like that. A bad quality of extroverted intuition is it can be very evasive. And it is very clever and it has quick wit, but that can be a problem if you're not using it in a good sense. So what can happen is they can weaponize extroverted intuition with quick wit to demean others' mistakes. So if they see someone else not being SI responsible, they might make fun of them and use their wit to make fun of them. Or on the other hand, if they're the one who was not responsible, um, they will use NE's evasive qualities, maybe to get out, to get out of things, get out of relationships or get out of jobs. So now we move on to the ENJ and the ISP, and these types both fuse NI and SE. So introverted intuition at its best is seeing vision of how things should be in kind of a clear outline it said you know and it's thinking a lot about maybe the philosophy of how things should be or the metaphor of how things should be but a very future oriented whereas extroverted sensing is very present it's the most r realist of the function seeing how things really are and being able to react accordingly and liking to bring intense sensory experiences into the present however when you meld those two together in kind of a bad conglomerate it can have some kind of bad effects so what can happen with enfjs and entjs is they might have enough ni to see the potential in someone but not enough NI to see the realistic potential or how things are really gonna work out. So the blend of this is they might see a potential in someone, like a business or a relationship. So they subject themselves to the bad present and they say, well, yeah, it's bad, it's bad right now, but it's gonna, I can see the potential, I can see what's gonna happen. Like, the, and the business is a lot of hard work right now, but it's gonna be good, it'll be good at some point. This relationship, it's rough right now, but they're having a hard time and this is, it's gonna be good. Um, but then you don't end up you don't end up with a good future or the good present when you have kind of this bad meld of NI with SE because that present a lot of times turns into that future and if the present is so hard once the future comes you don't have the energy to deal with it and so it becomes kind of a bad issue. Another thing is they might have an NI philosophy. They have a philosophy of this is how businesses should be or this is how relationships should be. Maybe the relationship should be give and take or whatever but they spend so much time building it and making it look good instead of actually being in it. So they take the SE busyness quality of all this doing, but not the SE presence and actually being in the thing. And so then they might not use NI fully, they might not fully reflect on how the business is going or fully reflect on how the relationship's going or sharing of themselves or deepening the relationship. Or maybe there's a one-sidedness to the relationship. So the philosophy never fully gets realized. So whereas with the ISPs, ISTPs and ISFPs, they have extroverted sensing second and introverted intuition third. So what this could be is they have enough SE to be taking in sensory things like maybe they're at a concert or whatever and they're taking in sensory things but it's not enough se to really like that and really want this intense sensory experience they get a little into ni and they become sensorily overwhelmed and then they become really shut down and this can become nonverbal. so this could be like at a concert for example this could be in an argument for example but becoming very shut down and very nonverbal because you've taken in the sensory things not enough se skill to be able to deal with it so boom into a bad version of NI, which just leads to kind of a detached nonverbal nature. Another example of that could be procrastination. For example, they've taken in the information of where we are with SE and with NI, they're thinking about all the stuff it's going to take to get there and all the SE energy it's going to take to get there. And it can lead to a lot of, it can lead to a lot of procrastination and stagnation because it's just, it's just too overwhelming. This blend of where we are versus where we want to be and the energy required and not enough energy and this this conglomerate can create a lot of procrastination and se on its own can take in that one experience treat that one experience as this is just this one experience and deal with it accordingly take in the information react and that would be a good use of se but they might take in the experience and then they use a little bit of ni and that as soon as you get into ni it's stopping you from dealing with it in the present moment because you can only be in one at once you can't be in both so as soon as you hop over into ni then you're thinking oh no, if this happens again, I won't be able to deal with it. And then it'll happen again. And what if it happens again? And it'll happen again and again. And creating this kind of like snowball effect or kind of this, it's not an optimistic view of the future, but it's this clear outline of a negative future that I'm not going to have the energy to deal with it. And I don't want them to deal with it. And uh, so then what comes out of their mouth, maybe an argument could be something like, you're just going to keep doing this in the future. And what if this never stops? And it's, it gets this, you know, this overwhelm 
Whereas instead of just using SE and saying, okay, this is what's happening right now. I can deal with it right now. But using too much, once you get into NI, then it's like, this is going to keep happening and I'm not going to be able to deal with it. And you get kind of this, you know, this overwhelmed shutdown. These are how the, these are how all the cognitive functions fuse versus differentiate. I think this is a really fascinating concept. I don't really hear, I've never really heard anyone talk about it, but I think that a lot of times when functions annoy people, it's not the functions differentiated in, in isolation. I think it's the fusion of them becoming this bad kind of conglomerate actually that really bothers people. I have several personality playlists. I've got a cognitive function playlist. I have a playlist for each of the personality types. Um, and I'll have those linked below as well as the loop video where I talked about some of those quotes that I shared earlier. So yeah, this is my video of the cognitive functions at their best when they're differentiated versus at their worst when they're fused. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye.